Hey, golfers, and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. It is, I believe, episode 53 now. So we're past the half century mark um, of the show. And we just had a major, another major. So, we, of course, we got to bring Pierce Lanou on. Um, he has Sunday Swing Up on the SecondSwing.com blog. Um, recapping the event, it was certainly a fun one to watch, Pierce. Um, I think that was my first thing I'll start with is that I think, you know, you see this every year when the Open's on and there, you know, people are like, we need, we need more Lynx golf. We need more Lynx golf. And, you know, obviously there's a bunch of it maybe on, say, the, the DP World Tour, a little bit more than there is on the PJ Tour. But it's very fun to watch the elements kind of take center stage and set the tone for a tournament the way they did at this Open. Yeah, it's it's just so fun to watch every year. And I don't know, I think... The Lynx golf is definitely a part of it that makes it just just so fun. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I think just the tradition, the history, the oldest major that we have, that's kind of, you know, Scotland known as as the home of golf. It's just kind of, I don't know. I, I look forward to the Open yeah. every year uh, just as much as, as any, other, any other golf tournament. And mm -hmm. the course is just... I, I like seeing carnage. So, oh, yeah. you know, you kind of, I think the U S open is talked about as, as the most difficult of the majors or right. it's at least supposed to be, but I feel like the open is the, the one that kind of delivers on that every year. The open can be right. Depending on yeah. the conditions and stuff, because, you know, a couple years ago, I seen Andrews right. guys were 20, 21 yeah. under par. Yeah. Um, but it's, that is, I mean, it's, it's a tournament truly dictated by the weather and yeah. that, you know, I think take a look at Justin Thomas's scores this week. I think I want to say, cause someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to say he went 68, 78, 67, 77. Yeah. Something like that. And it kind of shows how, and again, that's more of maybe more of an extreme example, but you know, on, on the days where he was kind of in the favorable weather scenario, um, he should have shot a, good score was able to make birdies mm -hmm. you know and then quickly things went the wrong way when he's uh you know doing a lot of wind or the cold or whatever and you can even tell too like it, the best part was that the guys faced different wind directions all week too it wasn't just the same wind every every day it was it was tough most of the days but it was a different direction where guys were hitting you know maybe it's driver gap wedge into a hole and the next day it's driver four iron mm -hmm. you know because of the wind it's they it changed the golf course so much that it forced these guys to adapt and so that was the fun part of this tournament um and then we'll get into it a little bit more too as far as a lot of players changing to clubs and whatnot but um xander shoffley ends up winning mm -hmm. another major uh he was he went quickly from you know that guy who hasn't won a major yet but is always up there to now having two in the span of a couple months. Um, your thoughts on Xander's performance um, and what was for a long time a really crazy leaderboard. It was very bunched together, and then he kind of just stole the show yeah. on Sunday. Yeah, I was kind of hoping for a playoff, as I normally normally do in these these majors. And, you know, the, the Open's got the unique format, the four-hole aggregate. I thought mm -hmm. that would have been fun. But, uh, yeah, Xander has quickly gone from – a guy where, you know, the narrative around him was, you know, he can't close out these big tournaments on Sundays and he's been notorious for kind of struggling on, on Sundays and closing tournaments out. So, you know, he's quickly gone from that guy to, I mean, he, he's now stepped into that elite level yeah, oh player, yeah. that, that group of guys that we, we look at at these tournaments and, and, you know, on paper, they, they're going to have the best chance to win. And, you know, he joined he joined another elite group of, of players this week. I think it was like Tiger, uh, maybe Jack and and Rory of guys who won the, the British and the and PGA, PGA in, in the same year. So you know, two majors, Olympic gold medalists, a it's bunch quick, of other tour yeah, wins. It's I quickly mean, become a Hall of Fame right, resume right, in a matter yeah. of a couple months. Yeah, and there's just been a lot of they talked about it a little bit this week on the broadcast with Xander is like Scotty obviously gets 
the attention that that he deserves and whatnot. He's got the six wins this year and best ball striker by kind mm-hmm. of a lot. But if there's a guy that you'd put at number two, it's it's Xander. I mean, right. he's he's second in almost every category. He's second mm-hmm. in the FedEx Cup standings. He's second in the official World Golf rankings. Um, yeah, yeah, just gonna... really just a model of consistency. Just just like how Scotty's been all year. Just I feel like he doesn't. He has, to your point though, he has flown under the radar in that yeah. sense of how consistent he's been. That longest, longest um, cut streak, the longest cut streak yeah. that's currently active right now, and it's been a year or whatever since he's mm-hmm. missed a cut. Um, that is completely flown under the radar. Um, yeah, guys. I mean, you know, it doesn't get talked about really. Right. People talk about who's winning and and who's you know making the most money and and mm-hmm. all that good stuff, but yeah, Xander just just plugging along, making cuts and posting really high finishes at these big tournaments. Right. Year after year. It's it's impressive. So I wanted to bring up his clubs and I got the list here. This yeah. is from Golf WRX. Um so he I want to talk about there's a couple things I want to talk about, but I'm gonna run through the list first here. So Callaway Paradigm AI Smoke Triple Diamond. That's his driver and his three wood. Mm-hmm. Um he did make a switch for Lynx Golf the last couple of weeks. Um so at the PGA, for example, when he won that one, he had um an Apex utility wood in the bag. Yeah. And that was a, his had his like three hybrid, I think at nineteen or maybe nineteen and a half degrees. Um switched that out for a uh Mizuno MP twenty HMB. So kind of a utility iron, and I imagine a lot of players made a similar switch right. for the last couple of weeks of golf yeah. where they took out a hybrid or a seven wood maybe. Yeah, that's and, a pretty and, popular and move. And put in a, a, some sort of long iron that they mm-hmm. could flight down and hit those kind of chaser tee shots or something into the wind that they obviously had to deal with a lot. Um, also interesting with Xander, he's got the Callaway Apex um, TCB irons, or I guess the tour kind of the cavity back Apex irons, but he's got four through 10 iron. Yeah. You don't see that. So very often. you don't see. I mean, it's it's really just a pitching wedge, but he's mm-hmm. got the he's got it as a ten iron on yeah. his club. Um, and in terms of wedges, new Callaway Opus wedge in there for his gap wedge, and then a couple of Vokey. Uh, he's got the SM10, and then a Wedge Works Proto, I believe, for his sixty. Um, and then the yeah, that putter he's had for as long as I can remember, the Odyssey yeah. Toulon Las Vegas, mm-hmm. that red thing that sticks out like a sore thumb when you're watching golf. So. Um, that's that's the bag for Xander, uh, Callaway staffer. So obviously, majority of it is Callaway. Uh, but that that switch from a hybrid to the utility. I, again, I can't imagine. I don't know this for certain, but I imagine it was a very popular choice. Yeah, he's you, not the you only saw one. so many players hitting type those types yeah. of clubs off the tee, especially when you get into a bunch of wind and you don't want the ball going as high. You yeah, just hit you, it a little bit lower. To. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's kind of what you're forced to do mm-hmm. a lot of times in that in those conditions. Yeah, I mean, you you step up to a tee box and there's a 30 mile an hour wind in your face and it's raining and you know you you can't pull out a a club that's gonna launch sky high right. and expect good things to happen. So yeah, the those utility irons really are, you know, we we see so many great shots hit with those at at Lynx golf courses and you think back to like the Scottish open even last year when Rory yeah Rory hit that two iron in on 18 and you know just so many guys utilizing those off the tee boxes at Mm -hmm. at the open in particular is is fun to watch I mean they're hitting it like waist high and then watching it just roll out yeah 100 yards it's just a completely different type of golf that we're used to watching over here so right it's it, to have that in that skill set for one is, is remarkable but um that is sort of we say it and you know the fitters talk to me and and all the time about just trying to you know it's about using every club in the bag has a purpose or as a as a tool um and that that purpose is taken away a little bit overseas for those hybrids when you're trying to keep the ball down a little bit more mm-hmm. and the weather was so extreme this week that you know i think the players that didn't make that change probably suffered quite a bit um or at least if they didn't already have a utility iron in the bag because i'm thinking back to saturday i believe it was where some of the finishing groups like shane lowry for example on that 17th hole par three were hitting driver yeah into it yeah. 235 yard hole or something like that so nothing extremely long like you've seen at us opens or pgas before where it, you get a par three that's like 250 270 but 
there was enough wind and there was the right shot hit driver so some like that's how extreme this this weather was um yeah that was the day we saw scheffler hit three wood there to like a foot that's right yeah 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 one of the better three woods i've ever yeah. seen when head covers come off on on par threes it's it's no joke right yeah so it's uh i i wanted to touch on that decision and then I imagine now as we get back into, I guess, more quote unquote traditional, this isn't really traditional, really, I guess the open championship is the more traditional golf. This is the U S yeah. golf is kind of what, what we're, we're used, used to, to, but right. you'll see a lot more of those, those higher lofted woods and, and uh, utility woods mm -hmm. and hybrids and seven woods go back into the bag. So, um, now I wanted to ask you this as well in terms of Xander, Scotty, they both have two now, two majors. If you were to pick, Who's going to have more at the end of their career right now? Who are you going with? Oh, that's. I'm going to put you on the spot with that one. That's a tough one. I mean, it's really hard to make a case against Scotty. Um, but I, I mean, just with Xander, much more fresh in the mind, winning two this year, and just kind of having that sense of getting the monkey off his back, and you know, maybe this is just the floodgates opening yeah. for him. I mean. Because it's not like he played poorly at the U.S. Open either. After the first one, he finished like T7 there. All right, played yeah. well, contended, and then comes back out again this week and picks up another one. So, um, man, uh, I'll say Scotty. Okay, I'll say Scotty just because he's proven it for longer. I think at this point. Yeah, he's been a quote unquote winner for another year or so. But. You know, if you told me in ten years Xander had more majors, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh I think I'm gonna go Scotty too, but I think it's worth you mentioned the opening of the floodgates. It seems like that happened with Scotty too, mm -hmm. where similar he won the twenty twenty two in Phoenix uh, waste management yeah. tournament, uh the WM Phoenix Open, and it seemed like that in a sense opened the floodgates for him where he had a stretch there where he won a bunch in twenty twenty two. Then he kind of slowed down kind of throughout the rest of that year and the later half of 2022 slowed down same thing happened again in 2023 and 2024 where he just kind of like when he wins he wins in bunches and is that is that what we're going to see now from xander maybe you know with the fedex cup coming up and olympics you know maybe we see more of that from xander mm -hmm. where he's just because he has been as you said consistently in contention really for four or five months now yeah. every time he tees it up um so i he has taken that next step like i i never in my brain really registered like xander shoffley above rory mcelroy for example right but now i do now i know the world ranking xander's been up to two before and you know things have changed but in my mind i was never uh it was always kind of scotty rory just they show, those are the two when they show up to a tournament those are going to be the the favorites but i think now there's a certain this win has changed that for me yeah with xander. yeah i mean like i said a little bit ago i think xander's kind of put himself into that category and yeah. i you can't there's not really an argument you can make against it at, at this point anymore i mean he, he's he's won the two majors now and, yeah um I like that he backed up the PGA too, yeah. because the PGA had a certain. I'm gonna try to put it the right way here, but I think because guys went so low and the weather was so perfect and the course was so pure, like it became almost a, a, a birdie fest in a sense of yeah. you know like your your 3M opens, it right? Was, I mean, yeah, I mean, it became the that. Score and was so what, 21 under. Now he wins a tournament in a completely different fashion, mm -hmm. where now it's the the open championship in brutal conditions for most of the tournament. He goes out and wins by a couple shots. Um, and to have both of those, the contrast there tells me, okay, this is a, this is a guy who's going to continue to contend no matter the circumstances. He's not a one trick pony. Yeah. And the way he did it too, just kind of like really silenced that narrative of he can't, he can't do it on Sundays when, when mm -hmm. the pressure is, right. is highest because I think he shot six under in the final round at the PGA. And then yesterday, the same thing, bogey free 65. So yeah, I mean, really doesn't feel like Xander has any, any weakness in his game. I mean, you, I keep talking about the comparison to Scotty in that, in that respect, but it's true. I mean, 
He drives it. Yeah, great. he's also gained a ton of club gained speed. Gained a lot of speed, that. a lot of distance. They, they kept bringing up that graphic throughout the week. If you're watching like the golf live from the open, yeah. the golf channel, you know he started. I think 2018 or 2019, he was at 117. Was his like average club speed for with driver um, measured, and now it's over 123. Mm -hmm. So he's able to, and that that's helping with every club in the bag yeah. too. So he's hitting everything a little farther. But clearly, he's also hitting it better if he's right. winning majors. Yeah, now, and, and so. he's not like a big guy or anything. I think he's only like five eight. No, no, like he's, he's not a big guy. He, you look at him and you're like, wow, this guy. I mean, he hits it far. And it seems effortless the way yeah. he swings. It seems like he still maintains that silky smooth yeah. tempo with that swing. But 123 plus mile an hour club speed is no joke. Mm -hmm. um, so there's speed to be had out there. Like, yeah, you know, if you can use your whatever your protocol super speed or whatever training uh i guess method you're going with there's speed out there to to be had um want to talk about some other names that were contending or up there all week you saw a certain i don't know like a you didn't see distance take over this week um like you've seen maybe i just i'm thinking back to like St. Andrews a couple years ago that turned into a birdie fest where because there wasn't a lot of weather, guys that could just bomb it out there had a big advantage. Mm -hmm. you, know, you had Rory, Cam Young all up there near the top. Cam Smith ended up winning with a couple of crazy putts at the end there. Um, this year it was a lot more about placing your ball in the right spot, not missing big, keeping the ball out of the trouble. And so you saw guys like Justin Rhodes rise to the top. Yeah, Shane Lowry rising up there to the top and spending a lot of time on the top of the leaderboard all week. Billy Horschel, um, Billy Russell Horschel, Henley, Russell guys Henley. who don't hit it far. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. They're not known for distance, but they're known for being, you know, managing the course, hitting the ball where there's not trouble. Um, Scotty's also really good at this for what mm -hmm. it's worth. He just doesn't, most people don't talk about this, but he, you'll never see him on a, you know, sucker pin actually going for it. Right. He'll hit the ball 15, 20 feet left of it, take his chances with that putt. That's something that was very much required this week with all the mm -hmm. pop bunkers and fescue and things. Um, so I just wanted to speak on some of that and how this tournament especially kind of tilts the scale a little bit to favor guys that maybe don't hit it as far, especially when the weather gets yeah. like this. I mean, this is what we see year after year at the Open, and it's one of the other things that I think just makes it such a great tournament is you can have these older veterans who yeah. maybe are well past the prime of their career still contend out there and that's you know we saw oh nine when tom watson you know yeah. was he 59 years old took Stewart right. Sink to a playoff saw and darren clark win almost <laughs> a couple won. years yeah, later darren clark um, brian Harmon last year brian Harmon, yeah not, I mean, not a long hitter by any means i mean it just kind of brings in that that experience level that i think mm -hmm. More, more so than any major, maybe other than the Masters, and that's more co course specific, having experience at Augusta. But um, yeah, just having experience playing in these majors for 10, 15, 20 years out in the in the elements, you kind of see everything. And yep, yeah, I mean Justin Rose specifically is that was definitely one of the the coolest stories. I think I was I was rooting for him to win of the week. I mean, um, the guy had to qualify for the yeah. tournament for the first time. Uh, in his career, I mean, he's, I don't know how many opens he's played. It's got to be. Well, they showed the the, the story yeah. of him. Was it 96 or yes. 98 or something like that? Something Late like 90s that, where he was, he was an amateur. amateur. Yeah. And but, I think I mean, he won the, the, was it the silver medal that the yeah. amateur gets or something? Like he's been playing these things for like almost 20 years. And so, yeah, just that experience showing. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, just just proves you don't have to be a young bomber, really. You can go out there and. Yeah. If as long as you're accurate and you avoid those big mistakes that we saw guys making all week, yep. you can contend. And there's a certain mental aspect to it too, right? You can you can tell guys like Justin Rose have. Yeah, where, they embrace it. They know yeah. it's gonna be a grind. Shane Lowry has yeah. it too. Like they yeah. love being out there and putting their rain gear on and dealing with the wind and mm -hmm. so I'm not, this isn't to say, you know, if, you, if you're at that level of golf, you obviously have this skill set and you've, and if you're like Rory McIlroy, you've won tournaments, but there was something that clearly he didn't deal with it that well this week. You know, he shot 12, 13 over, whatever it was, and missed the cut by yeah. uh, several shots. Yeah. Um, Justin Thomas made a bunch of big numbers this week. So, and I, and big numbers are going to happen. That's going to, you know, you're going to make doubles and triples in this weather most likely, but being able to, 
bounce back from it and keep your ball in play than the next couple holes is where these guys were tremendous yeah. all week. Yeah, I mean, you saw Joaquin Neiman make an eight at... Yeah, that was impressive. Number eight, well, the postage stamp. Well, it was impressive stamp. to respond the way he did. Yeah, he made an eight on a par three and then still shot even. Yeah, it's just one, like, one of those tougher days, too. Yeah. Um, Incredible. Yeah, there's... There, that's the again. It's just such a when it gets the weather gets like this. It's such a different tournament mm-hmm. than anything else. Yeah, you get also you had like you know shots being played off of hills and and then of course you have the the bunkers and hitting bunker shots backwards yep. and all that good stuff. Um, it's a uh, it's a treat. And so I think Shane Bacon made a post yesterday on on Twitter specifically asking for you know a month of Lynx golf every year yeah where we extend the the you know if it's pj tour extend that i guess part of the schedule or that season yeah maybe a one or two more events out there you got the scottish open you have the open and then maybe mm-hmm. a couple more beforehand i think i think it would be a good move to do more events like the scottish where it's pj tour dp world tour co-sanctioned you get the best guys from both of those tours yeah. and yeah, throw them on a lot of. That's another we should talk about is, is uh, Daniel Brown was yeah Daniel was Brown contending too. Who I Thurston mean, I'll be Lawrence. honest, I didn't know who he was yeah. uh, going into the week, and um, he he also seemed to have that kind of mentality of just accepting it and actually embracing what the conditions were, hitting my golf shots, moving yeah. on, you know, and that's how he was able to stick around for a while and finish really well for the week. You know, I, mm-hmm. someone I don't know what his world ranking was, something like five hundredth or yeah, I don't know, nowhere near the right. top. But yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. You know, he and uh, Lawrence, too. Is it Thr- Thriston or Tristan? I always thought it was Thurston, but I kept hearing Tristan. Tristan so sounds like it'd be correct. Right. But the H is throwing but me off. Thurston's more fun. Yeah. Lawrence. We'll call him Lawrence. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he had that going for him as well. Yeah. And it's not like that was funny, too, because he didn't. I don't think he gave the tournament away by any means. No, and he, none of these guys he went four hundred on the front nine. He was in the lead. Yeah, and then he went. He made one bogey on the back, but it's not like he shot a thirty six mm-hmm. on the back nine. So yeah, I'm not going to blame him for losing his team there. Yeah, I mean, he he did what he had to do to win. Xander was just better. Yeah, and ju- same goes for for Justin Rose and and uh, you know Russell Henley, Billy Horschel. All those guys shot under par yesterday. Three yeah. four like Rose shot four under. Mm-hmm. You know you. You come into the final round, you know, tied for the lead or a shot back, whatever he was, and you shoot four under, you think that would be good enough, you know? Yeah. Um, which is just all the more credit to Xander for for how good he played. I mean, 65, bogey-free out there is, I mean, it was probably the best round of the week. Oh, yeah. I think it was a low round of the week, and then I think it was low round of yesterday. Yeah. Or I guess Sunday by two don't think there was any other i think there was a 67 but that was it um but yeah i know there's there's talk of i was seeing some chatter too and you know i guess my buddies and i were talking about it too about the open and how you can get such an unlucky draw weather wise yeah. which i think some players maybe did the first couple rounds Yeah, it was more significant in the first two rounds for sure yeah. but then i was watching live from the open and they made a good point as well that it sort of evened out on saturday when the end of Saturday was brutal. Mm-hmm. Like that was the day that was when Scotty was hitting three went into that par three and some of the guys were hitting driver into it and it was awful. And those players were probably the ones that benefited from the first two days. So they had to finish in the tougher one set. So it kind of yeah. balanced things out a little yeah, bit. You saw Basically, a lot of guys. if you played, if you, you know, stuck around and finished really well in the tournament, you had to endure mm-hmm. really tough conditions at some point. Yeah. Yeah. There was, I think a, window of time two two and a half hours before the leaders on saturday where you saw a pretty good sized group of guys shoot three four a couple yeah. five unders and kind of really make a big move up the leaderboard and then yeah the by the time the leaders got to that that back nine and the closing stretch it was a completely yeah. different golf course and so <laughs> yeah i mean you already you already mentioned it but you just the weather really playing more of a factor in this tournament than yeah. probably anywhere else. And yep. that's, uh, yeah, that's what makes it so fun for, for fans. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll kind of wrap with, with that, but I wanted to also do one more thing. And that is this week now is our 
I guess yeah. for us, it's our hometown yeah. PGA Tour event. The 3M Open is yep. in town. Um, I don't know if you've looked at the field or not, mm-hmm. but I wanted to see if you had any names or, yeah. or, or potential winners for the 3M well, Open, see if you're correct on that. As of today, I believe Justin Rose and Billy Horschel are both in the I field. I think so. I know Billy Horschel said he was going to be for sure. So, I mean, you got to think you got to think those two guys are going to continue playing well and uh, be fun to fun to see some guys mm-hmm. who just kind of, you know, competed at yep. the open down the stretch, come, you know, come play here. And I know Sahith Tagala was, was listed in the field. I think yep. this will be his first time here. Um, he could definitely win this thing. Yeah. He's a guy that even if he doesn't win, I think I definitely want to make sure I take some time out there to go watch him yeah. just because how the way he hits the ball is, mm-hmm incredible he hits it so hard so far yeah um another one that'll be fun to see i think believe akshay but he is also yeah. in the field so that i be could another see fun him one. i could see him contending in this one for sure kind of seems like he plays really well at the the more birdie fest type yeah. tournaments um can make them in bunches and really eat up the par fives uh tony Finau obviously will be mm-hmm. there He's kind of the staple at this tournament. You know, he's, he's won it and seems like he plays well out here every year and kind of enjoys this part of the the schedule every season. Mm-hmm. Um, I always like to follow Sung Jay. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's in the field or not. He this has year. played it most years. He I has been he'll be here most but, years. Yeah. Um, yeah, just another guy that's really fun to watch play golf in person. So mm-hmm. precise and... Yep. and uh, yeah, those are those are kind of I think the the headliners, yeah. if you will. Lee Hodges. Yeah, you covered a lot of the names I was gonna bring up. Yeah, um, but it's a it's a fun one. I remember um, the very first one, the Matt Wolf year. The the Matt Wolf year. Yeah, that was the Hovland, Morikawa, Matt Wolf, yep. the three rookies so, that were. Quick story on that. I was there right behind the 18th tee box, okay. like right sitting right there watching them hit their tee shots on 18 as they finished and. The situation at the time was, I believe, Bryson was in at 20 under. Yeah, he eagled 18 to take he a one-shot lead. 18, yep. and then Morikawa and Wolf were on 18 at 19, I believe. And so I watched them tee off, and I sat at the tee, and I'm like, I'm going to stay right here because I imagined and figured they were going to come back to 18 for a playoff. And so I convinced probably 8 to 10 others to stay there mm-hmm. and wait. And so it was us, it was probably eight to 10 of us. My, my, I was with three other guys and they already, they went up to watch by the green and I was like, you suckers, I'll be right here for the playoff. And so it was just us. And then there was a CBS camera guy that came out to join us probably with the same idea. Right. So he's watching with his monitor and, uh, all of a sudden big roar happens and he turns around and goes Eagle. And so I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. You know, so we, that simultaneously big roar. So that's, that was my view of yeah. Matt Wolf's Eagle. It's worth was, a shot. It was worth a <laughs> shot. Yeah. You got the right idea there. Um, yeah. I remember that. That was a fun one for sure. I remember watching, I was probably standing 70, 80 yards from the green over on the left there. Yeah. Um, and I remember watching Bryson come in, make the Eagle and, um, you know, set that, set that number and yeah. then. And then I think Morikawa was in for birdie when yeah that 18th went hole. to take the one shot lead yeah. and then Wolf made that he almost eagled too made the I long believe. one from off the green to to win it, yeah that was a, that was an exciting one that 18th yeah. hole is such a I mean it's a great the, finishing the hole. fireworks that can happen yeah. on that hole for this tournament it's awesome yeah. so I'm always rooting for this it hasn't been as close really since I don't think it hasn't no been. yeah I know it seems Cameron like, Champ almost made it close that one year yeah um, but. Hopefully some like fireworks someone... on this one because 17 and 18 in terms of the water and the mm-hmm. long par three over water and then par five. Yeah, it's really a tough good finish, finish for sure. Yeah. Yeah. There can be some some lead changes there. Definitely. Yeah. Well, um, if you're listening or watching, uh, tune into the 3M Open this week. And then uh, one other message I have, too, is to schedule your fitting for Titleist GT. Uh, mm-hmm. I know you did some testing on that and uh, you approve of that. So the Titleist GT driver in Fairwoods, you can schedule a fitting. Those begin August 1st at Second Swing. Mm-hmm. So, Pierce, thank you for joining uh, Xander Shoffley wins the Open. Go read about it on, on the Sunday Swing, and we'll chat with you later. Yeah, thanks, Drew.